Hello everyone, my name is Valerie and today I am here to talk to you about the history of the famous Disneyland attraction, The Haunted Mansion. Throughout each Disney park all over the world, The Haunted Mansion has many different versions, but today we will be focusing on the original version in Anaheim, California. Back in the early 50s, when the ideas for Disneyland were still in development, Walt Disney wanted to have a haunted attraction that could both frighten and delight guests of all ages. It was a part of the initial sketch of Disneyland's map, designed by artist Herb Ryman and was actually located on Main Street, USA, but did not make the final cut once construction began because Walt did not want an old, rundown house in his park. Walt later said, We will take care of the outside of the house, and the ghosts will take care of the inside. An artist hired by Walt himself by the name of Harper Goff drew the first concept design for the attraction, and it looked similar to Norman Bates' house in the Alfred Hitchcock film Psycho. Before it was decided that this attraction would be a ride, it was originally going to be a walkthrough tour given by a mansion butler, but the issue of ride capacity caused them to change their mind. Initially, the line queue for the ride would be a walkthrough called the Museum of the Weird, where guests could see potentially haunted artifacts from all over the world. Some of the ideas for the museum did make their way into the ride, one of them being the phantom playing the organ we see in the ballroom scene. Real development and design began upon the planning for a park expansion in 1957, just two years after the park's initial opening. Walt Disney instructed artist Ken Anderson to begin the designs and later had him base it off of old Southern Victorian style architecture once he had decided to build a new land called New Orleans Square. Ken was also in charge of coming up with the story and experience of the attraction and was influenced by his experiences at the Winchester Mystery House in San Jose. His ideas for the ride were not to Walt's liking, so Anderson later stepped out of the project to work on the Sleeping Beauty film, and Rolly Crump and Yale Gracie stepped in. The appearance of the ride had not been designed to Walt's liking either, so design came to a halt in 1959, but the marketing team was not made aware of this and still added the mansion to Disneyland maps a decade before the ride would open. By the early 60s, the outer facade design would be finished, using one of Ken Anderson's original designs and cleaning it up a little. The mansion was set to be completed in 1963, even though Imagineers had no idea what would be inside the mansion yet, but they began construction in 1961 anyway. The outside was finished in 1963, but construction halted as the Disney company now had to build attractions for the 1964-1965 New York World's Fair, the most notable attraction being It's a Small World. The mansion was left empty for a few years, and the only clue about what was to come was a sign posted on the outside claiming that the Ghost Relations Department was taking applications from ghosts to enjoy active retirement in a country club atmosphere, described as happy haunting grounds. Rolly Crump and Yale Gracie began work on the mansion again, but Crump was not pleased with some of the designs for the illusions in the ride, so he took to his own and started to design some. Crump's ideas were seen as too weird, according to the other Imagineers, and at first Walt agreed. The next day, however, Walt came to Rolly's office and went over his ideas, saying they would be a part of the Museum of the Weird that we discussed earlier, but the museum would now be at the ride's exit. Once Walt made it known that he liked Rolly's ideas, suddenly the other Imagineers said they always thought that they were good ideas. Though the museum never made it into the final design of the ride, Walt had given Crump and Gracie an entire warehouse to store all of their ideas and developments in. Design and development continued for the mansion, but came to a halt again upon Walt's passing in 1966. Inspiration and creativity was low after this, as his passing took a very emotional toll on the Imagineers, but they were also faced with another issue. Walt was a leader to his Imagineers, and he made all of the final decisions, but because of his passing, he was never able to tell them exactly what he wanted the mansion to be like. They continued working, however, and perfected the Omnimover track system used in the ride, making traffic flow more smoothly and allow the Imagineers to decide what the guests could focus on, both with sight and sound. Once the Doom Buggies and the Ghost Hosts were developed, the Imagineers began working on the ride's story. Everyone had different ideas for the story, and without Walt's opinions, it made development even more difficult. It came down to two things. Imagineer Mark Davis wanted this to be a more family-friendly ride because he thought that a scary mansion wouldn't fit in Disneyland's family-friendly theme. On the other side, Imagineer Claude Coates thought the ride should absolutely be scary, because if Disneyland was trying to revolutionize theme parks, why would they build a silly haunted house instead of a scary one? In the end, each of the teams compromised. They thought that there was no point in choosing between funny and scary. They should do both. We see clearly scary elements in this attraction, like the seance room and the ghost ride in the attic, but we also see some silly elements, like the graveyard party at the end. It was decided that the mansion did not need to have one specific story, so they took ideas from all Imagineers on the project, including some of Ken Anderson's original ideas, and put them all together. A specific idea that was put into the ride was the hatbox ghost. He was initially supposed to be the bride's husband and would be positioned across from her in the attic, but he was moved to the area seen just before you descend into the graveyard, acting as a spooky greeting into the area. 
The ride's soft opening was on August 9, 1969, after 18 years of development and six years of guest curiosity. The ride was open to all guests on August 12th and was a huge success. A month after the opening, the hatbox ghost disappeared because the effect of his head disappearing from his body into the hatbox never worked properly. This ghost would not be seen again until 2015, being part of Disneyland's 60th anniversary celebration. In 2006, the ghost bride was given her own story. She is named Constance Hatchaway, she now holds an ax, and she married several rich men in her lifetime. You can see wedding gifts and portraits of her with her different husbands, in all of which the men's heads disappear, showing how she beheaded them to claim their inheritance. Each new portrait shows her pearl necklaces getting more extravagant, showing how much her wealth had increased. She was never caught for her crimes and died in the mansion, where she still resides today. Since 2001, Haunted Mansion Holiday, or the Nightmare Before Christmas overlay, takes over the ride from between September and October through December, giving guests a movie-themed experience every holiday season. Despite the seasonal changes and minor edits the ride has seen since its opening in 1969, the Haunted Mansion has been a staple Disneyland attraction for over 50 years, delighting and frightening guests just as Walt would have wanted.